Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Basilica for the Mass of this Saturday, uh, the fifth, uh, fourth uh, week, Sunday, uh, first, <laughs> the fourth week of Easter. Uh, we've had a bit of a glitch this morning, and uh, we do not have a canter. But I invite you to join with me in singing our entrance hymn. It's number 564 in the Catholic Book of Worship. Number 564. together to give God praise and to bring to him our prayers and our needs that we may worthily do so we call the pause to call to mind his goodness and to ask forgiveness for our sins you were sent to heal the contrite of heart Lord have mercy you came to call sinners Christ have mercy you are seated at the right hand of the father to intercede for us Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the celebration of Easter graciously give to the world the healing of heavenly remedies, show benevolence to your church that our present observance may benefit us for eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. But when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy, and blaspheming, they contradicted what was said by Paul. Then both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly, saying, It was necessary that the word of, the God, of, word of God should be spoken first to you. Since you reject it and judge yourself to be unworthy of eternal life, we are now turning to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have set you to be a light for Gentiles, so that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and praised the word of the Lord, and as many as have been destined for eternal life became believers. Thus the word of the Lord spread throughout the region. But the Jews incited the devout women of high standing and leading the men of the city and stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and drove them out of their region. So they shook the dust off their feet 
to protest against them and went to Anconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have won him victory. All the, end, all the, end, the, all the ends of the earth have, have seen, seen the, the saving, saving power, power of God. God. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of nations, and he has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the power, the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our Lord, our, our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. The gospel acclamation. If you stay in my word, you will indeed be my disciples, and you will know the truth, says the Lord. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. During the supper, he said to his disciples, If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and still you do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus says some amazing things in today's gospel passage. He says that the one who believes in him will do the works that he does and will do even greater works than these. And in a way, we see that statement being carried out in our first reading, where we see Paul and Barnabas going out to peoples, uh, Gentiles, and other parts of the world people that Jesus never had the chance to preach to. We see them bringing the good news, not only to the Jewish people, but to the Gentiles, to the whole world. Uh, in a way, they're fulfilling the response to the psalm today. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. I think it's important for us to note that part of the reason that Paul and Barnabas are going out to the Gentiles is that they have not been successful 
uh, in their efforts to preach the good news to the Jewish people. We see in today's first reading that out of jealousy, uh, the Jews in the city where Paul and Barnabas are preaching uh, have them thrown out, uh, that they, they're jealous of the success that Paul and Barnabas are having, and so they have them tossed out of the synagogue and out of the city. And it's because of this, and to some extent, that Paul and Barnabas then go to the Gentiles. It's interesting, in our lives, many times, what seems like a disaster turns out to lead us to something that's marvelous, uh, something we would not have come to if it were not for the difficulties that we ran into. If we can, like those early Christians, joyfully meet the challenges that come to us, the Lord works through those, and he brings about marvelous things. As we continue in our Mass today, we ask the Lord to help us to be joyful and strong in the midst of the challenges we face this day. We ask him to help us to be able to, in the midst of trial and temptation, uh, to trust in him in a joyful and peaceful way. And we ask him to reveal to us how he will work through our challenges to bring about great things in our lives and in the lives of those we love. God bless you. In the gospel today, we hear Jesus say, If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it with confidence in God's goodness, and that he wishes to hear and answer our prayers, we offer to him then our petitions and intercessions. We pray for our Pope and for all our religious and civil leaders that they may be open to God's guidance and that they may have the wisdom and courage they need to lead well. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those people who are facing what seems like disaster today. We ask that in the midst of their trials they may feel God's presence and have the joy of his grace working within them. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are being challenged today to reach out in love to help others that are in need. We pray for our health care workers, uh, for all those that are involved in any way in helping the sick and the suffering, we pray for God's grace and protection for them. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the persecuted, for all those that are struggling with illness or pain or depression or any type of hurt, for God's healing grace and consolation for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, that they may have eternal rest with God in heaven. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause now for a moment to offer our own personal petitions. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this morning, for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of the spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, 
Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Baptist, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. <clears throat> May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. confidence in God's goodness, we pray that his kingdom come, using the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to please join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O oh Mary, you always shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with kindness and give you his peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God come upon you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. I apologize for the poor caliber of the singing this morning, and I assure you tomorrow Father Critch will have somebody much better qualified than me to lead the music. You're invited to join in our recessional hymn, Sing We Praises to the Father. It's number 422 in the Catholic Book of Worship. 422.